Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how you can bypass module fault or channel fault on a Logic Designer Studio 5000 from Rockwell. So I've got a series of uh, strings of cards, I guess, uh, on my rack. I've got a couple of uh, uh, DI cards. Uh, you, can, you can see I got a, a AI card and this is an AO card. OB is A card. OB is AO card. AIF is your AI card and uh, AO card and some modules, right? So historian as well. So, um, for example, uh, this comes in handy when uh, you're trying to test a system and your program is looking at the module fault status and uh, channel fault status to actually put the default value to zero. Like, for example, here, uh, I have a program that's actually straight from Rockwell. Uh, that checks the status of the module's fault status and if the module is faulty if we scroll down a bit here after one ten seconds there I'm sorry uh, it sets all the value to zero right uh, it's just the way it is uh, that's how they did it you know the default time expires after 10 seconds and I set this to uh, module being faulty I'll issue an alarm on the HMI and once that's detected all the uh, DI will be set to zero right so this is one one way to do it. Uh, but uh, in a test bench, you know, uh, sometimes you might not have a proper set of wiring hooked up to it. So if you want to mitigate the uh, module fault, what you have to do is you have to drop in this module here. And in this module, you create a function, uh, a tag called uh, DI module status. And the data type is L module status type. So and then you map the value of this module structure into the name of the module, which is this name here, which pertains to the name of the IO module itself. And in there, if you open the Epsilon, you can see that you can put the module on simulate mode. Put to one here, hit enter. And if I hit apply here, note how the faulty IO status on your test bench will go to good. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh, so now it's as if all the proper wires are being hooked up so you can uh, get a good status of IO fault module, right? There's no, sorry, there's no uh, module fault now, right? So if I were to remove from the simulation mode before you put into production and hit apply, you can see on a test bench, of course, again, not the wi wires are not all hooked up correctly. So your fault status will go to true. And then after uh, 10 seconds has expired, you can see uh, that the module fault uh, it's detected and a zero value is pushed to all the all the uh, local uh, channel, right? So uh, that's one way to do it. So I'm going to put this to simulate because this is my test bench. Hit apply and my fault clears. At this time, you can go ahead and uh, make changes to each of the uh, bit and force values to the bit and all that, all that uh, uh, test settings that you want to set to per channel, right? So that's how you mitigate the module fault on a test bench. Uh, what about channel fault? Okay, for example, I have a program here. Uh, I'm reading uh, slot two, channel zero, and I'm taking the value and mapping it into a, a local IO test uh, tag. So essentially, you're reading a raw value and you're putting into the uh, a tag here. And I can use this tag to, to uh, check the um, status alarm and all that stuff right and with that being with that being said I, i've got another one latched on at the bottom here it looks at the uh, module fault status here right and also looks at the channel fault as well so if your module or your channel is faulted i trigger another variable called a local io test fault this could be anything could be pit 1000 sorry um say for example lsl l1000 fault IO fault or whatever. So this is actually tell you the fault status of the of that particular channel. If you have a module fault or a channel fault, this will trigger that. So as, as you can see, um, right now, although I have uh, put the module on simulation mode, the channel is still faulting, right? Uh, I can go try and do this. And after a while, it goes back to fault. How do you bypass this fault channel? Okay, let me show you how you do it. So this is in slot 2, channel 0. Slot 2 is this guy here. Right click and go properties. Under properties, go to connection. 
and go inhibit module. So what inhibit module does is that uh, it assumes that it inhibits the module and essentially all the IO and the channel in that particular module will be ignored and will be said will be told that uh, all the comms are all the uh, sorry all the wirings are good uh, and they're all ready for manipulation and, and all that stuff right so um, although this thing remains as fault uh, but now you can go right click and toggle and this will stay as good right so uh, on a test bench this is very handy it's always good to inhibit your module and then um, uh, so that you can actually put the uh, channel to a good status rather than being faulty so uh, the first demonstration was to put the module fault to normal using a sim and the second demonstration was to uh, put the channel each channel to normal uh, from the fault status right um, that is for uh, this is again go back to properties again and then go to connection as soon as it comes up here yeah connection this is for di same thing applies to uh, ai this is my ai card properties you go to connection again and click on inhibit right yes and then uh, same thing goes for ao card this is ob card properties connection inhibit right and the last flavor of the card would be uh, sorry this is do ao card would be this one here module connection inhibit looks a bit different but the idea is the same okay so those are the four different cards I've demonstrated DI, DO, AI, and AO. And if you were to uh, inhibit the card, all the channels will, uh, fault status will go to normal. And then you can start manipulating and uh, simulating values on your test bench. Um, but if you want to put this uh, system into production, of course, don't forget to remove the inhibit. Another thing I want to bring your attention to is that uh, if your card is faulty because there's no wire connected to it, you can see there's a triangle and an exclu... <coughs> Another thing to note would be the icons here. Right. Um, if your card is faulty, or if, if your module is faulty, or if your channel is faulty, you'll see a triangle with an exclamation mark in it, if you see it closely. If your module is inhibited, you'll see a circle with uh, two lines in it, indicating pause. So if you right-click here, and you go Properties, and you go Connection, you can see that uh, the module is inhibited. So I didn't inhibit this module here. You can see it's triangle and exclamation mark on the icon here. If you right click in module and you go connection, you can see this is not inhibited. When you click on it and note the icon here changed from triangle exclamation to a pause sign. Click OK. Yes. You can see this circle and a two line. Same thing for OB right which is your analog output card module connection inhibit okay yes and then there you go circle and and uh, a pause sign anyway uh, I hope this tutorial helps if it does please subscribe and th thumbs up other than that have a good day bye